From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. As always, we are going to be going around the globe with our headlines for you, and this first one is so impressive. NATO voices serious worries about Russian missile plans. Also, the end of American optimism. I'm so sad about that. And antibiotic resistance called growing threat to human health. We are living in tremendous times in history. Yes, we are. And I want you to know that 21 judgments are coming to pass on the earth. In Revelation chapter 6 to 18. Now, they are seven seal judgments, seven trumpet judgments, and seven vile or bold judgments. The breaking of every seal is when a judgment occurs. The blowing of every trumpet, another occurs. And the tipping of every bowl, the final seven occur for a total of 21. But guess what? Just like he's protected his people through the ages, he's going to protect you and me. Luke 21, 36, watch you therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape, escape all these things that shall come to pass. What? Revelation 3.10, I will keep you from, not through. The Greek word is ek, E-K, always meaning out of. If God wanted you to believe that you were going to be here for the seven years, he would have said dia, D-I-A, through. He didn't. He said, I'm going to keep you out of it. Now, here is the point I want to make today. We're going to get into the signs. And I'm going to do all 21 of them in the next two weeks. So stay tuned. Listen to carefully now. Every single sign that we're going to mention happens during the seven-year period of tribulation. We're gone, evacuated. What's the point? Every one of the signs that happens after we're gone, after the rapture, is already beginning. That's how near the coming of the Lord is. We got to hear the shout sooner than you think. Come up hither. Whoa, that's exciting, isn't it? To know that the rapture really is uh, something we can look forward to. It will take us out of the great tribulation that's going to come on this earth. Well, we're going to be starting with the 21 signs, the first four. Have you ever heard of the four horsemen of the apocalypse? The four horsemen? We're, the first sign deals with that first horseman, and uh, it is the white horse. Well, they're already beginning, as Jack said. Take a look. All this week, the judge unravels the issues that are taking your rights away. Freedom Watch. Now, we're going to see if this could possibly be that first one. All right, the white horse. There's our president, of course, and um, uh, his cohort there from Congress, Jack. Sister Pelosi. Yes, she's a, <laughs> a good friend of his, and of course... Of Congress, and we're going to go on here with the next one News Watch magazine. Finalization of socialism in America. How's that going to tie in? Jack's going to do it all for us in just a moment. And again, what they mean by the new order of the ages. Now, you know, Jack has been talking so very, very much about the the new order that's going to be coming. And, of course, he has said that the one world government could be dominated by our president. And you believe that with, from well, the bottom of your heart. Well, I believe it because Henry Kissinger says we have created Obama for that position. And so uh, Zygmunt Brzezinski says, I have actually in, taught him many of these things to be head of that new world order. Now, I say some of these things often because we are in, every nation on earth and get tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of new viewers every week or month. And many people have never heard it for the first time. The Bible teaches that there will be, and that's Revelation chapter 6 verses 1 and 2, a rider who comes on a white horse and he is the dictator of the new world order 
And as he rides the horse, he has a bow, but no arrows, because he's coming in peace. For he knows that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6, who will come on a white horse in Revelation 19, verse 11. And so he rides to power and controls this new world order. And you've heard me teach it often. But there are seven organizations who for many, many years, even centuries, have been working for this final world government. We had the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Club of Rome, the New Age Movement, and the United Nations. It's here. Now, each one of the seven organizations has a part they're going to play. The Bilderbergs, with their secret meetings, have laid out an idea whereby they shall microchip every human being on earth, fulfilling Revelation 13, verses 16 to 18. The Club of Rome said, we are going to take in the entire globe. It will be the new world order, a one world government. And we have divided the entire globe into a 10 division world empire. Now, Rabbi Hagian, 2,000 years ago said, when that happens, our Messiah will be here. And all the Old Testament prophets agreed with him. And then we had Christian leaders like Barnabas who traveled with Paul and Jerome who did the great Latin Vulgate who said, when this 10 division world empire comes into existence, our Christ will arrive. That's how near it all is, ladies and gentlemen. And that 10 is mentioned, of course, in Daniel chapter 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. But more than that, this rider on the white horse comes in peace. He has no arrows. And oh, that is important because right now, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, the Palestinians are all saying, send us Obama to make the world peace. They are looking for a world leader. And he, this one comes in peaceably, Daniel 11, 21, enters in peaceably, Daniel 11, 24, makes a seven-year contract, Daniel 9, 27, which is broken, as we'll see in just a moment from now. But it's a contract of death and hell, Isaiah 28, 15, because by this peace contract, he destroys many, Daniel 8, 25. How's that? He's given them a false hope deceive them. Oh, peace, peace, isn't it wonderful? But there'll be no peace. Jeremiah 6, 14 and 8, 11. And when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. Who's going to break the contract? Read it, Rex. All right, I will. So that writer on the white horse will be the dictator of the new world order. That's very enlightening, Jack. Very, very good. Now, could the rider on the red horse be what we're going to be looking at right now? The rider on the red horse, Russia, test two intercontinental missiles. Again, Russia building missiles to counter U.S. space defenses. And NATO voices serious worries about Russian missile plans. Now, why are they so concerned? It would raise serious worries because it wouldn't be conforming with the existing arms control, which brings security to the European community. So you can see why they're very, very concerned about those Russian missile plans. Well, how about that red horse? Could this be the red horse, Jack? There's no doubt about it. It's Russia, Rexella, and I'll show you why. In Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, we have a description of the nation that will break the peace contract. The Obama may be the one who sets it up, but Russia, after it sets up, says, I will go against them that are at rest, that are at peace, Ezekiel 38, 11. Well, how do we know that's Russia? The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Gog is the end-time ruler of that country, Russia. The term Magog there is what the Greeks called the Scythians who populated Russia in the beginning, Magog or Megagites. The next name one sees is Meshach. That's the original name from Moscow. It was Meshach, Mosak, Moskoti, Moscovy, and Moscow. And Tubal is southwest of Siberia on the map, but Tobolsk, the Russian spelling. And it's the war of the latter years and the latter days, Ezekiel 38, verses 8 and 16. 
and it's going to be a holocaust on the earth. Now, Rexella, the New York Times exposed what our president did when he made a secret deal with the Russians, when he worked with the non-proliferation treaty. He said, look, we are afraid of what Iran's going to do. If you will help us control them because you're giving many armaments to them, we will not set up our bases like we had planned in Poland and the Czech Republic. Agreed. Well, it's all fallen to pieces because Russia no longer believes in us. You saw the headlines. They now have um, one of the largest armies. They are spending more armaments along with China than any other place in the world. And China will join them, as you'll see, during these 21 judgments. And ladies and gentlemen, right now, they have their base, the Russians in Kaliningrad, and they've gone to South America to negotiate with Chavez to put one up in Venezuela in our backyard. And now our president's concerned, and he's gone back and said, well, we cancel this in Poland. Will you accept this? And they're willing. But he's leaving the Czech Republic along and now going to Romania to set the basis. We are getting ready for World War III. I'm warning you, there could be World War III soon over. Iran, don't strike them because this would be like Armageddon. It will be Armageddon. We're going to go on now to, remember the four horsemen? We've already dealt with the first two, the white horse, and of course the red horse, and here is the black horseman. Could this be the beginning? And it's from Jack's Intelligence Briefing, Economic Earthquake. We're going to go pretty fast here. The end of American optimism. Oh, Obama and the spending volcano. Fed sees recovery slowing. And Fed set to downgrade outlook for the U.S. Treasury bears cave as bond yields keep tumbling. And markets swoon on fears. And bank closing in Illinois is 110th of the year. The one in Illinois just closed, and that is number 110. Check the economic outlook for the world. It does not look good. Let me tell you some sad news. They say soon they will cut much of the Social Security benefits. There's not enough money. We're spending too much. Retirement plans will be hurt. And now 110 banks already bail out just this year. The FDIC that insures your money for $250,000 will go defunct. They have nothing. They're broke in the last three months. That's sad news. But folks, we want to tell you, there's only one place that's at safety, and that's in the arms of Jesus. And that's why he said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven in Matthew 6, verse 20. We need to, folks, because the time is short. And we've got to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, is that predicted in the Bible? Yes. Now, Russia was Revelation chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. This is 5 and 6. And this black horse is a picture of poverty and famine. The angel is heard saying, a measure of wheat for a penny, a measure of wheat for a penny. A day's wages was one denarius, and that would buy 16 ounces of wheat. A day's wages for a loaf of bread that could even come to America. In James chapter 5, verses 1 and 3 says, Go now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. And why? Because they have gathered treasure together for the last days, and now they've lost it all in verse 4. So they're wailing. And it's pictured in Revelation chapter 18, verses 10, 17, and 19. For in one hour is thy judgment come. This is the Western world. Verse 17, for in one hour is she made bankrupt. Everything's come to nothing. Verse 19, in one hour is she made desolate. And even silver and gold is so worthless that they're casting it into the streets in Ezekiel 7, verse 19. And that's in the day of the wrath of the Lord. And that's Revelation 16, verse 1, the seven-year period of tribulation. This is judgment number three, and we're facing it right now. And number four, the rider on the pale horse. Now, this is the last of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. New superbug found in UK hospitals. Ah, oh, the Brits fear superbug gene may go global. Doctors brace for more cases as Indian superbug hits Canada. Antibiotic resistance called growing threat to human health. And North Korea is said to have 13 bacterial weapons. 
and terrorists could use insect-based biological weapons, in other words, swarms of insects they could use to spread a deadly disease around the world. Oh my, Jack, could that be the fourth horseman of the apocalypse? Oh, Rex, oh, there's no doubt about it. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus said there shall be pestilences just before I return to set up my kingdom on earth, Matthew 24, 7 and Luke 21, 11. And that is pictured in Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. He said, I saw another horse, a sickly looking pale horse, and his name was Death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto him over a fourth part of mankind to slay with sword, hunger, death, and the beast of the field. They tell us now 25 new viruses have come, all from animals. Uh, we had AIDS from the monkeys, along with Ebola Zaire. We have cowpox, chickenpox, camelpox. We have malaria, all from the beasts of the field. It's here. But wait, there's one more thing I wanted to say, and I'm going to do it next week. You've heard about Ground Zero, and our president got up and said, I want to know that these people have religious freedom to build it there. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Religious freedom. The Pentagon right now is having prayer meetings at Ground Zero, and the Muslims are welcome, and they're going there to pray. Isn't that great? Wait a minute. He's condoning it. He's pushing it. But when it came to the Christians, Billy Graham, the greatest man in the history of Christian evangelism, son Franklin, was to be the speaker and the chairman of the great meeting. And the Pentagon that's promoting Islam has canceled him on the day of prayer. He is in favor with the Muslims, but not with the people of God. And next week you're going to hear the Word of God like you've never heard it on this subject. All right, Jack, I just want to say, whoa, where do I get my peace? You said we could have peace in a troubled world. You can. If you have the Lord, He gives you a peace that you know nothing about in this world. Oh, Jack, show us how we can be forgiven of our sins and ready for heaven and have peace now. Oh, I'll tell you, folks, He's a God of love. And he sent his son because he loved you. He sent his son to be the savior of the world, 1 John 4, 14. Look at me and pray this. He'll save you now. You'll be ready for his return for all that's going to happen. Lord Jesus, savior. Oh, you shed that precious, holy blood for me. Thank you. Thank you. I know that in order to be forgiven, I have to ask you to come into my heart. Lord Jesus, I receive you this day, August 19th, 2010. Now do it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust that you opened your heart to the Lord. Did you pray that prayer with Jack? Write to me, will you please? There's my address on the screen. I'll send you absolutely free this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord's forgiven you of everything in your life you don't want there and he's your savior. Our author of the week, Showdown with Iran, talking about everything in here that we've been explaining and elaborating on it. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Bob? To order your copy of the Showdown with Iran book with a bonus DVD, The Mideast Crisis, Can Israel Survive? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. 
Oh, thank you, Bob. I do want you to have this in your home. It's so very important because, you know, the threat of war with Iran is growing every single day, and you need to know all the details. It's very, very thorough. You need to have this book. And I got a bonus for you. And we're going to be talking about Israel also, as well as uh, the Mideast crisis. Oh, please, make the call or write to us, showdown with Iran. And my bonus, can Israel survive? All right, friends, how we need to be growing in the Lord, keeping our faith. And actually, I want to leave you with a very, very good thought along that line. Feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. How true that is. We need to be building our faith every single day. We'll look forward, friends, to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very much. Bye-bye.